let me take this opportunity to welcome you to, to uh, this evening's Third World in Perspective seminar. Uh, this is our fourth seminar of the year. Uh, we've got one more on March 24th. Uh, it'll be on U.S. policy toward Pakistan and Afghanistan. And um, Brian Smith, who's sitting right here, be one of the speakers on, on uh, Afghanistan. And, 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 and Brian Parkinson right here is on the program that's going to talk about Pakistan. And Richard Hall is going to give an overview. So... Um, that that's to come. This this uh, um, we we have some. Uh, first of all, I want to welcome the speaker, uh, Dr. Bohr, and 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 Joseph um, to Georgia Southwestern Third World in Perspective series. And uh, also, we have the president here this evening, with his wife Connie. And we, of course, have all the students welcome. I mentioned Brian. We have Kathy Zach, who's editorial assistant, Journal of Third World Studies. Uh, very important to the production of the journal. And her husband, uh, Paul, who's uh, he's retired from Secret Service. And uh, then we have Dr. Klein head of the History and Political Science Department, and Lauren Robinson is the head of Fine Arts, and then Chuck Wells is in Fine Arts, been part of this, and, and Keith Wynn has really been an important part of this, this relationship that the university has established uh, between Dr. Boards University uh, in Ghana Kwame Nkrumah uh, University for Science and Technology, Kunst, uh, which is in Kumasi, is that right? Yeah. It's got about a million people, I believe. So. But anyhow, and welcome, welcome everybody, and thank you, Bob Slinker, for uh, taping these programs that are very important so the community can see what we're doing out here in the third world this uh as far as third world studies this room bring back a lot of memories because it was here on february 18th 1981 that we had our first seminar uh third world perspective seminar and it was here also that we had the first meeting in the association third world studies which was october 21st 1983 and um of course, that association has become the largest of its kind in the world, and we're very proud of that. And I was talking to Dr. Bohr. We, we, uh, our last meeting was in Ghana, and um, and uh, Almina uh, uh, Beach Resort, which is very historic in itself. But that was our first meeting in Ghana, incidentally, and we hope to go back again in, in other African countries. Um, and in fact, we're meeting in Savannah uh, this year and Brazil uh, in 2011. So, um, and uh, but and we also have a journal, Journal of Third World Studies, um, which has become a major publication in the field. I'm proud to say, and so forth. And I can go on and on, but I'm I'm taking. Uh, time of Dr. Bohr and Dr. Parkinson. So, uh, I don't have to tell you the importance of third world studies. Uh, I think you you understand that this involves the great majority of people in the world, and and we're all connected, you know, in so many ways, and it's important that we understand the third world, know its problems, and perhaps we can contribute to some of the solutions. 
to these problems and perhaps also we can can respect people in other areas of the world and understand them better and respect them and maybe we can get along better uh, through that and maybe, maybe that will maybe that will uh, uh, improve chances for for world peace uh, it's very simple uh, as Martin Luther King said now I got to do the words uh, but as I said, I'm, I'm going to introduce the speaker because that's what he's here for. And I think you've heard me before. So, But uh, Dr. Professor Dr. Dr. Daniel Bohr, I was told to make sure to mention all those titles. And uh, I know he's proud of all those titles. Uh, it's anyone that gets two PhDs, I mean, let's face it, has to be an outstanding uh, scholar. Um, he he was uh, he started his teaching career uh, almost 40 years ago um, in, in a in a small village, and then he went on to earn his BA in geography at the University of Ghana, Lagan. And then he, in 1988, he was awarded a Master of Philosophy degree. In 2001, he earned his first PhD in medical geography. And then three years later, another PhD from the University of Maastricht, Maastricht in the Netherlands. And um, that was in health sciences, just sort of a a unique PhD and now he is a full professor of geography and provost of Knuntz, Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. He's also a provost of the College of Arts and Sciences. He's published over uh, 230 articles on just about every subject imaginable and uh, with a heavy concentration in health uh, and health care and um, also other issues political economic social issues so it's a personal pleasure and honor to um, welcome Dr. Bohr to the university and to the third world perspective seminar series and uh, we appreciate you participating in the series, and we hope that you have an enjoyable uh, stay. The, the remainder of the stay is enjoyable. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Bohr to Georgia Southwestern State Third World and Perspective Seminar Series. Thank you so much for the opportunity to make a presentation and be part of the Third World Seminar Series. I'm here to make a presentation on a theme which actually is a serious constraint to the development of Third World countries, especially Sub-Saharan Africa. I want to speak to obstacles to fertility reduction in Ghana. Fertility problems are key problems in the whole of the, the third world, especially in sub-Saharan Africa. Look at the woman. It's a true depiction of this fertility situation in third world countries. This woman is pregnant. The tummy is protruding, not because there's too much water in it, but there's an organism in the stomach. She's bearing a child 
at the back and holding another child an indication of birth spacing very short birth spacing so this is a depiction of the fertility situation in ghana in west africa in africa and other third world countries and it's a constraint an obstacle to development it's a main source of population change fertility is the main source migration is also there etc etc in sub-saharan africa the main obstacle to population control in sub-saharan africa has been more high fertility other than other parameters of the demographic equ equation mortality and mig mig migration the birth rate is quite high take nap at 1000 of the population and a total fertility rate of 5.2 the world bank 2008 we we have approximate factors of fertility biological factors that actually aff affect fertility age at first birth marriage age at first sexual intercourse age at first birth and all these are ref re reflected in the fertility demographic situation in th third world proportion of women in marital unions frequency of sexual intercourse postpartum abs abs abstinence as after birth then lactation amenorrhea contraception and induced ab uh, ab abortion in fact the socioeconomic factors that actually affect fertility are education income by the literature place of residence other urban or rural employment status in fact in sub-saharan africa the traditional methods of contraception and postpartum abstinence and lactation amenorrhea are giving way abstinence is not working so much now whether the women the men have developed so much passion so they will not allow their wives to rest or whatever it is no one knows fertility decline has spread to most of sub-saharan african countries over the past two decades and ghana is a classical example ghana's fertility rates is one of the lowest in sub-saharan africa but it's not when compared with europe and north america it's quite high uh, it is currently 4.4 in fact the 2008 demographic and health survey, survey reports puts it at 4.0 niger is 7.2 uganda 6.1 and burkina faso 6.4 so it's uh, uh, among the very low ones in sub-saharan africa that has been reducing consistently now in 2003 the demographic and health survey it was uh, 4.4 2008 is 4.0 i've just got the report niger is so so it's quite high now in 1988 it was 6.4 5.2 in 1993 4.4 in 1998 4.4 in there was no change in 2003 and 4.0 in 2008 the current statistic now you know that with the steady decline of the hiv aids prevalence rates one would have thought that it will reflect in the steady fertility decline. But this has not been the case. So this is an area I've got to look research in uh, on. I, I don't know why the HIV uh, prevalent rate is going down in Ghana. Currently it's about 1.7. It's going down, up, uh, down from 2.2 or so. But fertility, we expect that it must actually be associated with fert fertility decline. But the rate of decline does not commensurate the rate of decline in uh, HIV its prevalence. Age at first birth is quite low. For women 20 to 24, the age at first 34.6% gave birth at age 20 in 2004, DSSS 2004. Over 30% gave birth. So age at first birth is quite low. It's about 17, 18 that it varies from region to region in certain rural communities especially in the in in in, in the in the north is lower than in the south and it's higher in the urban areas than in the in the the rural areas the urban regions tend to have a lower fertility than rural regions the emerging trend of teenage pregnancy could erode gains made in fertility re regulation in ghana about 23 percent of teenagers age 19 are mothers in Ghana when they are supposed to have left the high school they are mothers whether because 
parents cannot get money to take them to school so they stay at home and they are they have no jobs to do so they have to plus they take to uh, producing children in fact Ghanaians are by nature pro natalist pro natalist is interest in having more children and among the Asantis, about the largest ethnic group in Ghana, a large family size is a source of prestige. And in the very interior rural areas in Ghana, a public ceremony is organized to honor a couple after having their 10th child. So when you are a woman and you, 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 you give birth to your 10th child, there's a ceremony and a whole realm is presented to the husband for the energy he has got to make the wife produce 10 children, even though it's the woman who actually loses a lot of en 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 energy. And this, is, this still goes on in certain interior regions. In fact, when I was carrying out my research, a certain woman had had, had I think, uh, eight children. And I was asking whether she wanted more. She said, yes, she wants to get 10 so that she can present a ram to the husband. Education and wealth are important factors influencing fertility in Ghana. For us women with no education exhibit a total fertility rate of 6.0, those of secondary education and above have a TFR of 2.5. So education is a mechanism that will be able to break through this whole problem of uh, fertility, high fertility. For income, women with the lowest world, uh, within the lowest World quinta have a deep total fertility rate of 6.4, and those are the highest quinta fertility rate of 2.8. The other major factor which could contribute to fertility decline is contraception. About 15.3% of currently married women in Ghana make use of any modern method of contraception. They are not using it at all. And a survey indicates that they, they, they feel they, they don't uh, have maximum sexual satisfaction using the condom. So it might be raw, so that they will, they will, they, they will derive natural, the natural satisfaction. So the rate of use uh, is quite low. Efforts have been made at fertility control in Ghana. In fact, 1960 population policy, and uh, 1979, 1970 May, uh, Ghana National Farm Planning Program, all these were geared at. Uh, reducing fertility. In 1992, there was the National Population Council established. There are other organizations that try to uh, ad address the fertility problem. In fact, I selected two areas for my research. Metropolitan area and a typical rural area. Mass Metropolis and Quabre uh, District. The midst of the two scenarios, we hope, will produce results that will be representative of the country as a whole. The objectives are clear at examining the cause of fertility in Ghana using the two contrasting districts, specifically to examine the effects of socioeconomic factors of education, income, employment, and place of re residence on fertility. And secondly, examining how education has influenced attitude to family planning, that is contraception. The methods used, qualitative and quantitative, both of them, we actually use a sample of 160 comprising of 18 women, 18 and above, uh, randomly selected. I, I wouldn't waste your time on this. Let's look at some of the results. The total fertility rate for the metropolis, Massey, and rural, when computed, we have 4.0 or about 4.1 for Massey in 2008 and uh, 5.7 in the rural district. It means that fertility status uh, uh, rate is quite high in the rural district than in the urban. And we, we know the characteristics of the rural district. Characteristics are po uh, poverty, is the very low level of uh, uh, education, etc., etc. Lack of inform information and all that. Then, but the total for the two is 4.7, 4.8, Let's look at preference for high Fertility. In fact, preference is higher among the 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 illiterate than the illiterate, and Massey met Metropolis is lower than Quabre Setre, the rural district. So you realize that for the literate, 
it is 5.6 for mass metropolis but 44.8 for quabre such so it's higher the preference is higher in the rural areas than in the urban areas and we the underlying factors will be clear uh, education uh, contributes significantly to fertility change then respondents were asked their preference and uh, why do they prefer high fert fertility and this came out clearly prestige yes prestige women cast uh, 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 when those on their um, rivals when there's conflict between rivals rival women two men marry the same husband one who, uh, the one who has more children will use that to cast in window have 10 children how many do you, uh, how many children do you have and men too have also been be, 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 be referring to it and a man who has several children when he dies has a high status of funeral the funeral status is quite high than one who has a uh, very few children security that when uh, they, 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 they grow old their children will take care of them perpetuation of the patrilineage yes if you don't have children it means you are the family system will break down they will not have children to perpetuate their the uh, the matrilineage then a, 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 a economic factors but security rank for, uh, quite high now the key reason for preference is economic and this was a qualitative survey qualitative quantitative combination a 38 year old woman living in a rural settlement having six children made this statement in response to a question on her preference for high family size cost of living is too high we need the children to help us on the farm and petty tra trading you see it's a, a rural economy two of my children girls help me with my petty trading when they close from school in fact some have not even been going to school because of that they want to take them to farm oh let's uh, what, what are you going to do is in, in, in school quickly uh, let's go and work on the farm even when things get tough i stop them from going to school to help income generation to cater for the family so this is the 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 the, 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 the situation in third world countries a 41 year old woman who had nine children expressed her preference for large family sizes as follows it is good to have more children if some die others will survive so mortality child mortality in fact mortality is also a contributing factor moreover your your family will continue to survive so that your name does not die out my target is 10. i want the bedujan bedujan is the ram given to the husband after having the 10 child ram gift for my husband let's look at socio-economic factors and fertility in fact those who have never been to school uh, zero to three and four and above, above is quite high and it reduces with education so the level of education of a woman actually is a determinant of the family size primary education will reduce secondary education reduces further so a, a policy to enforce and reinforce compulsory education especially for a girl child is a necessity let's look at social economic factors and fertility those who are receiving incomes uh, 60 Ghana cities uh, 60 Ghana cities will be about 40 dollars a month and above and those who are receiving less you realize that those who are receiving uh, 60 Ghana cities and above have lower family sizes and then than do so the the problem here is that it's unfortunate that the poor who should have given birth to uh, who should have had lo 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 lower family size are rather producing more even though they, they don't have the resources to take care of them they are rather, rather, rather giving birth to more children employment status to you realize that those who want to have four and above the unemployed are more than the employed the unemployed don't have the resources but they rather give birth to more 
children than those employed who have the resources to take care of their children. And this calls for a serious uh, policy uh, statement. A 29-year-old government employee of the clerical grades who has two children and was comfortable with that responded to a question on her family size. Government employee has gone to school, finished high school, a uh, graduate or so. This is his uh, thinking. Many children will be an obstacle to my professional aspiration. The short study leave itself is a barrier to having more children. In Ghana, uh, when you give birth to a child, the maternity leave is about three months. So if you want to keep giving birth to ch several children, then that, 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 that's going to seriously affect your economic status. I want to further my education, so we not like childbearing to be an obstacle. The thinking of one who has gone to school, have a certain level of formal education, and one who has never been to school. Let's come to contraception. About 75% have adequate knowledge of modern methods of contraception. Whereas 72.5% have accepted the use of modern methods of contraception. But 25% practice modern methods of contraception. And unless we are able to convince them to practice contraception, this issue of fertility will continue to be a ban to socioeconomic development. On the use of postpartum abstinence, a 36 year old woman responded, responded had this to say. I would have liked to use this method. Normally, in the olden days, when a woman gave birth, she would go and stay with the parents. The mother would not be with the husband. And after about six months, she comes back to the uh, matrimonial home. But these days, it's not so. The husbands are not giving in. They are not allowing them to go and stay with their parents. I would have liked to use this method, but my husband would not allow it. He would not even permit my going to deliver in my matrimonial home. So the traditional system is actually breaking down here. So respondents who do not use contraception gave several re uh, reasons for the non-use. And for 26% of them said the sex will not be enjoyable. But we have as high as 37% saying that their husbands oppose the use. So the husband, the men, are a serious obstacle. Then some of them too fear about 13% fear of health effects. And invariably in the third world countries, some of them just make, choose, uh, they, 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 they choose any method at all without going to the physician for a prescription. So they just go, I want to use this method, I want to use this method without going to the uh, physician for prescription. The, anything at all goes. You can go to the shop to buy any drug at all no prescription. In fact, when I was coming, I came with my own uh, malaria, this thing, uh, tablets. That when I, I, I have the symptoms, uh, there's no need going anywhere. That's what we've been doing there, because you know the, the, the symptoms. Now, then expensiveness. Even though it's, it, uh, it's not expensive, it's expensive to the rural dweller. To, to the rural dweller, 50 cents is even a lot of money. Unavailability in the rural areas these uh, facilities are not sold. Then, for some of them, about 6% of them, ineffectiveness. You write that they've been using them, but it's not helping them. A 37 year old man had this to say when asked about why he's not interested in contraception. They say the condom is the best. But my husband does not want to hear about it at all. And the use of the foaming tablets over, uh, over lubricates the vagina. This will not make my husband love me as he should. Indeed, the use of these methods does not make sex as enjoyable as it should be. So for satisfaction, they, they again is, is said they want to keep uh, having more children. Let's look at some recommendations. In fact, the obstacles to fertility reduction in Ghana, given the survey results, are pronatalist predisposition, lack of interest in traditional practices, poor attitude to the use of contraception, 
low level education, poverty, unemployment, non cooperative attitudes of husbands, low coverage of their contraception tip campaign. The total fertility rates of 4.8 is higher than the national average, especially in the two areas. The TFR for the rural district of 5.7 is about the same as the national figure of 5.6 at the time of the survey, while the metropolitan figure of 4.1 is above the national average of 3.1. The traditional prices of postpartum abstinence and lactation anuria are not mechanisms regularly applied today. The effective option left is for women to use contraception regularly. So we realize that economic empowerment of women, access to formal education, participation in family decision making, because the men de decide in most cases whether con condom or contraceptive methods should be used or not. So the issue of family decision is, 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 a, is, a, is a serious factor that actually undermines the, the, the use of contraception. If the husband says no, it's no. So it's, uh, uh, it may be different here. Here there's equal say there of the two partners. You all decide to do this and that is done. It's not so in our area, especially among the illiterates. Positive attitude of men to contraception and resort to traditional practices will likely solve the fertility problem. So that is what came out of the, uh, the survey. This is just a, a, a brief summary of the results. So I'll pause here and entertain a question or two. Thank you. What we'll do is <clears throat> have Dr. Parkinson uh, respond first, then we'll have questions. Uh, I don't think he needs much introduction. Brian R. Parkinson is assistant professor of history here at Georgia Southwestern. He got his uh, BS degree at Georgia Southern, his MA and PhD at Florida State University uh, in, in Middle East. Uh, history. Um, he's done a lot of research. He's had publications. He, he teaches just about every third world uh, area here. And uh, so without further delay, give Dr. Parkinson his opportunity for response. Thank you. Um, I just wanted y'all to know that I'm a huge soccer fan and I hold no grudges for what Ghana did to the United States in the last World Cup. And I, I really hope that we can meet again in South Africa this year because um, they destroyed us. Uh, that's okay. Um, there's some interesting themes that I kind of uh, picked out about this. First of all, uh, Ghana is in uh, what I would call the second stage of population growth. And that is a stage in which you have very high rates of uh, fertility or births, but also high rates of deaths. And eventually they're going to be transitioning, and you can tell from the professor's uh, remarks that they're going to be they're kind of in a, a stage where they're transitioning towards that third stage where they're having uh, lower fertility rates over time. Um, and I, I would assume that the, the number of deaths would also, the mortality rate would also be uh, decreasing. That's probably uh, you know, access to greater and greater uh, medicine, particularly in rural areas, right? Okay. And uh, this is uh, not unusual for West Africa or actually the third world in general. This is, you know, you could apply much of what he said in this lecture to most third world countries. There's very few that would not fit into that uh, paradigm. Okay. Uh, I liked how you had uh, a comparison of the third world in general and you, how you used socioeconomic factors because the socioeconomic factors that you applied to your questions, we can actually apply here in the United States. You know, we can look at uh, a woman's level of education, whether you are living in a rural or urban area and how wealthy you are and you could end up with similar disparities 
and how many children a woman has. So it, it's interesting how he can come up with a formula that applies to Ghana, but we could also apply a similar formula and end up with similar, uh, I guess, answers here in the United States. Um, I also thought it was uh, very, very interesting that uh, you uh, argued that part of the increased fertility was a part of a, a pronatalist uh, argument, which, which makes it less socioeconomic and more cultural or traditional. And when I teach uh, West Africa in my World Civ I class, I talk about this, this concept of the big man. And the big man always wants to have the largest family. And by doing so, he is increasing not only his prestige, but also his power and wealth vis-a-vis -vis or compared to other families, tribes, and villages. Is that, is that right? Yeah, okay. So, um, so it fits into a kind of historical pattern that's been part of West Africa for thousands of years. All right. Um, I also thought it was interesting how uh, the reasons for increased fertility were prestige, security, uh, perpetuation of the family name, and economic. Uh, but one of the things I thought was interesting was uh, how we didn't really mention too much about how, and this is part of that transition, about how women haven't come to understand the value or the benefits. You did mention it once. One woman talked about how uh, it was not very beneficial to her uh, educational and economic goals to have more children. So what we're seeing here is some uh, cognizance, some recognition of women realizing the benefits or usefulness of having smaller families. Yeah. So, so in general, uh, as per capita wealth increases, as your TFR, your total fertility rate decreases, uh, the only two, uh, you, you're going to see uh, Ghana, as well as most third world countries, transfer or move into uh, a third stage. The only two countries, I think, in the world that would not fit into that model would be Israel and Saudi Arabia. And though ha those have some uh, religious, uh, cultural issues that are related to have because uh, they don't fit into that curve where you as you get wealthier and wealthier you have fewer children Israel and Saudi Arabia are the only two countries I can think of so most likely as the wealthier and more prosperous Ghana gets and they are uh, Ghana is the beacon of the economic world in West Africa uh, for many reasons which I'm not going to get into but um, as they get wealthier and wealthier uh, we can probably predict that that those fertility rates will decrease. Um, one one thing I didn't I I, I, w I do have one question that you can address when you get up here is uh, was uh, condoms the only uh, form of contraception that was really considered? What about birth control pills? Well, yeah, there, there, there oh, was yeah. several of them. Uh, yeah, that was the there, there was several of them. That uh, 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 any modern method. Uh -huh. What I, I captured there was modern medicine, any type of modern medicine. Oh, any time. But any the, time. the re, respondent re, referred to condom. Oh, okay. It's more re, 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 re Okay. Used. Okay. I also thought it uh, would be uh, interesting to, it's interesting that the men, men are almost uh, as uh, almost as much of an obstacle as socioeconomic yes, yes. factors. Men, you know, kind of pressuring their women for the ram gifts, for these uh, you know, 10 children. Uh, you also have uh, men pre putting pressure on women not to use contraception. So, uh, you know, women are having to deal with, you know, ma male pressures. How, that's about the nicest way I can say that. That's more with the, the <laughs> illiterate uh, families. Uh, rural, the, uneducated. A, a, a elites. Uh -huh. uh, we could make okay. All right. They have a yeah. Yeah. Well, that's about all I have, Harry. <laughs> Welcome. Okay, well, our participants now answer any questions you might have. Would you like to come up here and, then, and I'm sure you have some questions. Yeah. Any question or questions? Whatever. Yes. Uh, first of all, uh, what is the government attitude towards fertility? Are they trying to reduce fertility? Yes, there's a, a, a policy. In fact, we have the uh, population council, and the population one of its goals 
is to ensure a reduction in fair, fair fertility. Uh, so now they are penetrating the rural areas. Other organizations are supposed to come to join the government. But there's uh, an obstacle. The obstacle, I don't know whether it's an obstacle. You see, it's religion. Carries, for instance, will not buy the idea of uh, the use of contraception and race. And also, the religious organization, the Christian religious organization, feel that the pro, uh, promotion of condoms, the use of condoms uh, in, on the te uh, television, in the press, etc., etc., uh, undermines moral credibility. Because by, by implication, they are exposing the youth to premarital sex. The government argument too is that whether you, 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 you expose them or not, some of them will go into it. So let them have the knowledge and assets. So those who are interested will go into it. So it's a serious problem. The religious organizations are not happy about promote. They, they, they feel that the government should promote abstinence. That's all. But not the, the, the use of condoms and, and, and the in fact I, I was working with the, an organization, a social organization. Uh, they used to take me to institution for me to deliver lectures and the rest. We went to an educational institution and they distributed condoms freely. From that time, I, I wasn't happy working with them again because of the moral aspect of it. Another question. Yes. Um, what is the religious breakdown in the country? Are Christians predominant? Are Muslims predominant? Christians. 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 Yeah. About 60 percent and above. Roman Catholics, Roman Catholics also, yeah, uh, uh, balance. Roman Catholics, Presbyterians, Methodists, Baptists, these two, yeah, these are the key uh, ones. That order, yes. Yeah. Well, do you get nuance in the resistance to fertility control among the different uh, ethnic groups and religions? Yeah, the, with the ethnic groups, uh, the Muslims are also not very happy with it. Just like that, the, the Kalis. Uh, and even you may even have some Christians who, who feel that uh, it's not good even to, to use it because Jacob had 12 children. God took care of them. So it's natural. Enjoy, have the children, and God will rain manna from heaven to take care of you. So that, that, that's the thinking of some of them. <laughs> so whether uh, realism and objectivity must come into religion or faith. So it is faith on one side, realism and objectivity on, 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 the, on, the, on, the, on the other side. Because we have not seen mother coming from heaven <laughs> to give to a woman who has had 10 children. You got to sort of struggle. Economic downturn, you know. Yes, any other? Yes, sir. Well, I know you've linked um, education to to this whole issue of fertility, oh, yes, yes. especially education of women. Yes. Um, is the government making strong efforts to promote education among women? And what's the climate of support for that in the country? It's in the Constitution. The government is obliged to ensure that every child of school going age has access to education. So we have a free, compulsory, universal, basic education is free and uh, even at, at the basic level they don't pay any fees, fees at all except a few fees that they, they don't pay fees at all it's free the government pays fees on behalf of the, 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 the parents don't pay any fees, fees at all it's free and then you 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 have to pay academic facility user fee tuition fee is free basically so the government is making effort but as to use legal means to enforce, that is uh, not forthcoming. That if you are a parent and you don't send your child to school, you take the child to farm, to go fishing and the rest, uh, no sanctions are brought to bear on you. That will have to be done. Yes? How many years of schooling does the average female have in Ghana? In Ghana, okay, my research showed that, uh, what is six, uh, seven, 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 eight, around that, that yeah, about seven, eight. It means that in seven, eight, you not even have gone to the junior high school. We have uh, the primary up to six, six years, six years. Then junior high school, 
three years. So that would be 12 to 15 years. And senior high school, 16 to 18. And the university, 19, uh, college, 19 to 22. Yes. Does Ghana's government agree or disagree with the United Nations Conference on Population, something like the Cairo Conference, et cetera? Their conclusion is that the only really effective way, other than already being a developed, economically developed country, to lower fertility rates is by increasing women's rights yeah. and freedoms. That's the I only mean, effective mean. method. Is the, does the government agree or disagree? And if it agrees, does it vocally agree with this? Yeah, the, 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 I think that the, the government is signatory. Yeah, yeah, that agrees. Yeah. So women empowerment. So in fact, because of that, we even have uh, 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 informal education, especially for, for women. So when they go to farm after in the evenings, they are taught A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, one, two, three, and the rest to, to be able to read and write. Then also they are also uh, predisposed to vocational skills, informal vocational. Uh, as, as, as close to, 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 to the government said, I think okay. that you know, third world countries, the problem has been with the finance, funding, and etc. That has been a pro, 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 pro problem. So, right. that the, 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 the concept is there. The, the government has accepted the, the concept and will have to uh, implement, but we have a whole lot of problems. So, one will talk against the other, and the, the event is. No vocal education is the thrust then, but not any attempt to change any kind of cultural attitudes towards women. Yeah, the, the government is doing the, the, the best it could to change certain cultural attitudes. Uh, this female genital mutilation is uh, uh, the government is actually addressing it. Female genital mutilation. And we have certain women groups that are advocating a change. We also have the trocosy. The trocosy is a practice in which, in a certain typical rural area, girls will be made to be, will be kept somewhere, and they are, they are supposed to be the the, the wives of the the girls. So they will keep them. You will not let them go to school, and when they grow, they can't marry until the girls allow them to be. the whole lot. The government is trying to break through this bar. This obstacle, and uh, even though it's re re receiving resistance, it's doing the best it could to ensure that there's a uh, uh, social uh, sanity. Yes. As you probably know, the United States itself, even though it's a first world country, has had a lot of public uh, resistance to sex education in American schools, and abstinence is the way that we're headed. Uh, do you find that that is also happening in Ghana, that there is very little sex education? Yeah, th this sex education is going on. In fact, uh, it's to be introduced at the junior high school level. Even they say, even at the primary level, it, it, it goes through the entire curriculum. But some religious organizations, and even some parents, what do you teach the, the, the child the gross parts of the sex organ? And even there is it's an anathema for the female organ, the banana to be and uh, to be said in the local language. We say so, hey, don't say so. You see, it's another an, 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 an thing. When you are there with your parents, you don't have to say that at all. You're a bad boy. Why do you say this? But here it's open. And the bad biology class and all that. When, when, when I was even making the presentation and it came to banana, my, my tongue was heavy. <laughs> Just even at this age, <laughs> mentioning the, 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 the banana, my, my tongue was so so happy. <laughs> yes. In, in the realm of work, jobs, and such, do you see evidence that women are, are making inroads into traditional male areas? For example, do you have uh, women teaching at uh, professor level? At, at oh yes, yeah. In fact, they are, they, are, they, are, they are making strides. Uh, in our university, uh, we have a, a policy of ensuring that by 2015, about 40 percent of enrollments will be women. Currently, especially in, in the social sciences, it's about 36 percent were female and about uh, 64 percent male. But when you go to the sciences, especially the technical areas, 
engineering, you can have about 10% women. The, 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 the traditional notion is that they fear mathematics. So the mathematically inclined discipline they don't want to go into. And that is open to all. Scholarships are given to some, some of them. Some traditional areas and districts have been given scholarships to some of them. So they are, they, are, they are coming up. They are coming up. Some of them have attained the professional levels in the healthcare, for instance. Some of them are physicians. So it's open. There doesn't seem to be any serious constraints. So it's open to them all. Okay. Now I want to find out the fe faculty level here. I made a presentation at Howard, Howard University, Washington, uh, in October last year. And when I, I mentioned the fertility issue, they said it's not the only in, in the third world countries, but even in the United States, some women have eight children. children. I could hardly believe. Mm -hmm. is, is it actually true that some have six, eight mm -hmm. children here? Yeah. And more. And more. And, and more. And more. Yes. That's, that's yes. Serious. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I was uh, wanted to know if the education in Ghana is changing more to the United States model uh, of progression or is it still following the British? Well, it, it appears uh, an uh, amalgamation of the two. Now we've introduced the multiple choice. Yeah, the multiple choice. Even though the problem we have is that the grading system must change. It's still seventy percent for A. Even though because it's when you go to uh, UK, for instance, it's SE. You write an essay, you write to analyze. But in the United States, is you see the isolate the facts. That's why they be able to go to the moon. You see, you isolate the facts. The British, you write. And right before they give you 10 over 15, you are going to trouble. But here it's only the facts. You need to get the facts out. But we have to be able to change the, the grade system. The, the grade system has to, to, yeah. to change. Mm -hmm. Well, I was in, in uh, 84, I was in Ghana, and then the, the figures that I remember there was probably about 2% maybe guided to the educational system. Uh, back College. College. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And so, you know, has that through the education, and you say there, has that the shift this is still now. It's still, it's still, still the change. university education. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's still. I think we, we have more than five percent now. It's it's, it's yes. going beyond that. Yes. The problem is that it's it's free. It's almost free. You only have to pay I think in the uh, every year you, you pay some two hundred dollars or so or three hundred dollars for academic facility to stay here. And uh, sometimes too, we have established some fund to help the poor. Even the three hundred dollars a year, some can't pay. So we we go to the banks, industrial establishment to collect to uh, to to, to uh, uh, look for some funds to take care of the very poor. So it's, it's now open. And we really believe that uh, the first class graduates, the female is taking over. The females are taking over. Yeah. Those who get first class in certain areas, sometimes <laughs> they are, they are, uh, in, in, in our university, I think for two years running, the one who had the highest average <coughs> among the undergraduate, they, 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 they were females. So I, I, I actually, I, when I go to for lectures, I sometimes saw the, 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 the say, You men, big, big men, you go posting, a, a female top you. <laughs> the reason I ask a question is because I remember that instruction there uh, between among males and females in some of the groups uh, instruction for females have to be strictly done for by females and instruction for males for example with regards to contraception uh, if the mother population probably would be receptive no no no, no it's, it's open it's just talks from the primary level the textbooks are there for them to be in order. So there's no isolation policy. And that happened with the latest constitution. The, the if you say the change occurred with the latest constitution. The, the, the constitution is place that every child of school going in must go to school. The constitution is clear. So it's uh, an ob 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 obligation on the, 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 the government to make sure that they all go to school. So if I at the basic level, our junior has to be free. No one pays anything at all. The government has, has absorbed all the fees, including the, the government has even started giving free uh, uniform. 
uniform, yeah. school uniform. Some parents say they don't have uh, school uniform for their children, so they are giving them free uh, school uniform. Then they also, some parents say they don't have money to give them a meal. So uh, at the primary level, if you go to school at about 11 o'clock, you have a free meal for all your children. In fact, about 50% of, 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 of children are there. So the government is doing the best it could to break through this path of ignorance and illiteracy. So here you can have a family size of about eight here in the United States. When I go to tell my people this, they will tell, tell me, no, John, it cannot happen. There is about two, one or two. But not eight of them, so a family of eight. Yes. They are not many. Anyway. They, they are not many. Anyway. Well, someone has probably told you already. Whereas in your universities, the population of males is twice the size of the females. Oh yes, uh, 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 here yeah. it's the reverse. It's the reverse. Yeah, I was told. When I, I went to Howard, we we, we, we went for a, a lecture, and there were a, 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 a class of about a hundred. There were about forty males and sixty females. Now ask, what is happening? Say, yeah, it's so. In the United States, we have more females than males. So I will not be surprised if in the next few years a female president comes up. Why so? Why do we have more females going to college than males? Why? why, why? And everything is, is a social problem. I know there are some females who go to college to snag a husband. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Um, a lot of demographers argue that the the only and the only point at which you see a decline, a significant decline in the birth rate, is when people come to the realization. Yeah. Having children is expensive. Yeah. It's economically disadvantageous. So I guess my question is, is that the case in Ghana? Are families still advantaged by having a lot of children? Yeah. Or are they about to reach that point where they start understanding that having 10 children yeah. really comes out of their pocketbook in ways that... Yeah, I think the education has been going on steadily, consistently. The Ghana Population Council is tasked to do that. So you have to realize that when they come from the rural areas to the urban areas, the total fertility rate reduces. Because when they are in the rural areas, the natural environment is there, plenty of food, they don't think about all these things, you see. But when they come to the, to the urban areas, we've got to do for accommodation, pay for water bill, electricity bill, and all that, educational bill, then they, they begin to learn sense. And that's why the total fertility rate continues to, to, to decline in the urban areas. But in the typical rural areas, you go, the plantain is there, nature is there, they go to farm, they get mushroom free and all that. So they don't think about these things. So the education is going on. So there might be conscientization. Education is very, very important. So as they get to know the value of having fewer children, to be able to take care of them, your quality of life will improve and all that. Yeah, it, 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 yeah. But until they are coming to grips with the problem in the urban areas, they might not uh, have learned their lesson. Okay. So, uh, thank you. If there are no more questions, I've learned a, a lot from you, <laughs> and you from me, and then we hope to. I'll be coming to present a paper. I'm a member of the Association of American Geographers. We shall be having our annual conference in April in uh, Washington at Marriott Hotel. And there, there will be no snow. If I went and look at the CNN, <laughs> and, CNN and, and I look at the snow, if I was to go there now, I, 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 I would go, go back to Geographia. <laughs> so there, the snow will have thawed and there will be no problem. So thank you so much and God bless you. Thank you for that excellent presentation and the question and answer. Um, does anyone else have anything else to say? I think a lot has already been said.
Well, then, thank you very much for your attendance, and have a good evening. Thank you. Okay.